a disturbed individual shows up at a school with an assault weapon. Now, in this situation, I think the future will play out something like this. Someone in the school hits a panic button, and that button opens a live stream to a public safety dispatcher, and it activates a pre-positioned drone that's been just sitting there passively on a hallway ceiling or within the school, kind of like a smoke detector. And that drone sends its live feed back to police dispatch so they can monitor the situation. And if that human operator gives the go signal, then the drone rotors up, it immediately deploys into the scene, and there, together with the operator, it can help identify the threat, and under direct control of that human operator, it could incapacitate that threat. This response could bring a situation under control in a matter of seconds. I believe this is how we can end school shootings. There's Rick Smith, CEO and founder of Axon, that uh, technologically developing company. Uh, uh, last summer, talking about ways that he thinks they could neutralize these school shooters. A drone that's placed in these schools and ready to go at any point where someone can come and control it and take them out. Non-lethal weapons, though, to do so. Um, his latest idea to do this, though, rubbed a few of their board members the wrong way, and they've since left, and they're very upset about this. But you know, before we get to how much they've changed it and pushed back on this, because once it's comes up internal conversations, we wonder what else was said behind the scenes. But first, let's let Rick finish explaining how he thinks this can end. Let's watch more. Think about the Mandalay Bay shoot. The shooter's elevating somewhere in a massive building, hard to locate. A threat response drone could have gotten there much faster and likely captured him alive. Or the Pulse nightclub. It can take hours to assemble a SWAT team to respond to events like these. When you have drones, you can send them in much faster. And compared to a human life, a drone is disposable. And you can remove the human risk to the first responders. Of course, you know, we've talked about these horrific school shootings. They just keep happening. If we had pre-positioned protective assets on site, you could stop these threats much faster with far less risk to everyone. Particular situations where he sees where this could change. But you know what, let's go back to that first clip because I forgot to say one thing. If you guys notice the imagery in that particular clip talking about ways the drone can be deployed and the school shooter coming in, you know, the depictions in that, in the imagery there, right there, the school shooter looks like a cartoon superhero. The slides look like a comic, like an action comic book, like a Superman comic book. Even the wording as it goes through, and then when the non-lethal rounds goes like swift, 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 it's like fun, it's like exciting. I guess that's part of the sales job, which I'm sure you're gonna get to. But one more part about this last presentation, this last part about this presentation is Rick Smith realizes some of the pushback, some of the problems with it, and he acknowledges it. And he gives three rules for robot safety when it comes to AI and things like that, similarly to the way that we saw in iRobot. Let's watch him finish this. I'd like to start by proposing the three laws of first responder robotics. First, any decision must be made by another human. And not just any human, we need to know who that human is. They must be authenticated and have accepted legal and moral responsibility. Second, there should be no lethal force. Robots don't need to defend themselves with lethal force. We need to focus on making less lethal force sufficiently effective, and de-escalation should always be the key. And then finally, we should embed audio and video capabilities into these systems and require their use be recorded and reviewed by independent oversight committees. Yasmin, has he convinced you? No, no, he has <laughs> not, not at all. I am with JR, I am nothing if not skeptical of everything and everyone. I'm very skeptical of technology, especially you know, drone technology that's strapped with tasers, right? Especially to be used in schools. And this CEO, I don't really trust him either. He seems very opportunistic to me and maybe um, in maybe one of the worst ways that I can think of, right? So first of all, I don't trust any of these visionaries who claim that they have the one solution to some widespread problem that's affecting millions and millions of people. We shouldn't be trusting these people either as Americans. We've been burned enough times. Elon was gonna fix traffic and the Theranos girl was gonna fix medicine and was it SBF was gonna fix crypto and we know how all those stories turned out. Also, he used the Uvalde tragedy and the Pulse nightclub tragedy as justification for moving forward with his pilot program, despite the fact that the majority of his own board voted against him doing so. And if that's not 
you know, like narcissism claiming entrepreneurial exceptionalism, then I don't know what is. Yeah, those board members resigned after that pushback happened and they said it seemed like the discussion was gonna happen or pauses yeah, were going to go into place. And apparently that didn't happen and they pushed back and now they have letters and press releases really blowing this whole thing up. So it appears to be a little bit up in the air, but they're pushing forward. I'm sure they've got folks to replace them there and again, this is goes to your point about uh, uh, the potential money making part about this. This is what Axon is because I'd seen their imagery before and, and we've seen it in body camera. Uh, that's where you see that little logo and many of the body cam, police body cam footages that we always see of them beating the hell out of someone or murdering someone in the streets. Um, this is what their about page says about the company. We're Axon, a team committed to pushing the boundaries of technology to help law enforcement feel more confident in the field, at the station and in court. Smart weapons like their taser devices are part of their whole thing. So the, the idea is to develop weaponry or assist in ways that they can potentially have police do their job, whatever it is they may be, from visual to technological approaches. So yeah, these are the types of companies that get these big, you know, these grants or these these projects to then implement technology for police departments, which we know we give tons of money to. So he's got to develop new ways to do it. And honestly, yes, I actually do think. A percentage of him, I can't give it. His heart is in a place of we got to stop these school students. I don't think he wants them, yeah. but his approach to doing it is like, I have a new idea and it could be a money maker. That's at least the way I see it. I'm not sure which order those priorities are in. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and that, that's fair. You know, I don't, I can't imagine that anybody wants school mm-hmm. shootings to happen, right? I think you'd have to be a uniquely terrible person to want these types of things to happen. Um, and maybe he does have some kind of a solution, but at the end of the day, we we know what the solution is to the problem. And this country will do anything. We'll go way out of its way. We'll put drones that are strapped with tasers in schools to avoid doing the one thing that we need to do. And we will spend God knows how much money doing so. How much money are these drones going to cost our public school systems? They don't care. And they already have no money. We're already we are we don't even have teachers, but we're going to have drones, okay? Uh it's it's going to be the way it is. And by the way, he did mention the problem of someone's manning this drone and maybe they'll start getting out of control over policing, start firing at kids because that kids in the hallway while they're uh while they're supposed to be in class. Things like that eventually happen. It comes with school resource officers when they're there uh in schools in person. We've seen attacks. There's an image yeah. of the particular kind of drone that may be taking down a school shooter. We'll see where it goes. Um, but the concerns are there, and he says he understands them. We'll see how we'll see how okay. they, how they adjudicate this whole thing. Uh, but board members are not happy.